uh, Professor Ray Bates of UCD, Meteorology and Climate Centre. At the global level, uh, carbon dioxide is increasing quite fast. It's up to 400 parts per million now, as compared to 280 in pre-industrial times. And that is causing a warming, and we've seen a warming over the past 100 years of 0.8 of a degree Celsius. And most of that is with a high degree of certainty due to greenhouse gases, particularly carbon dioxide increase. The sea level is a good indicator of the global effect of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, and the sea level is rising at a rate of 3.2 millimetres per year at the moment. And since the beginning of satellite measurements about 20 years ago, it stayed steady at that rate, 3.2 plus or minus. As far as we can tell, that's an accurate measurement of global sea level rise. If you look at the 100-year trend in the Irish temperature, the Irish temperature has gone up about the same amount over 100 years as the global average temperature, about 0.8 of a degree. But if you look at it on a shorter time scale, the Irish temperature is very much affected by natural variability. What happens to the Atlantic temperatures very much influences the Irish temperatures. And there's a phenomenon called the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation. Uh, by which the Atlantic temperature goes up and down by a fraction of about, about 0.4 of a degree Celsius over a period of roughly 70, 70 years. And that has a big influence on the Irish temperature, so that in addition to the global effect of the greenhouse gases, we have the local variability of the Atlantic. And in the 1940s, for example, the temperatures were almost as high on a year-by-year basis as they are at present. Well, we have, it has warmed, but we are subject to this natural variability due to the Atlantic temperatures at our location. So while we are influencing the greenhouse gas effects, it's difficult to pick out the signal of global warming from the large natural variability that we have at our location. Irish agriculture is in a difficult position in that the European Union is setting very uh, strict targets for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, it's already been decided that there will be a 20% reduction by 2020. Uh, the target being discussed for 20, 2030 is a 40% reduction and the target being discussed for 2050 is an 80 to 95% reduction. Now, there, is, there are other factors motivating these targets as well as, as climate change. And uh, energy security for Europe, of course, is one of them. And the possibility of gaining the lead in renewable technology development is another. So there are, other, there are very, a, a number of factors acting together to, um, to drive the European targets on greenhouse gas emissions. Now, in the Irish situation, this is putting us in a rather difficult position because our agricultural emissions account for 30% of our total greenhouse gas emissions. And that's three times the European average figure. If the targets have to be obeyed on a country-by-country -country basis, uh, it's going to be very difficult for Ireland to expand our agriculture, uh, agriculture production as foreseen in the Food Harvest 2020. Extremely difficult if we have to meet the European targets. So the way I see around it is um, if we look at climate models, they're predicting that the Mediterranean countries are going to become very dry and hot in summer in decades to come, whereas the Irish temperature will be much less affected so from the point of European food security, uh, Europe could well depend on Ireland and countries like us in the northwestern fringe of Europe to produce more food uh, to make up the deficit because of the climate changes uh, in the Mediterranean countries. So I think there's a very strong argument for pushing for food security and agricultural emissions to be considered on a pan-European basis, not on a, just a country-by-country -country basis. And this would be of great benefit to Ireland and to Europe.